literally ever since I was a little kid and I've had a birthday. I've had one wish when I blew out my candles. It's gonna sound weird, I know, but basically my one wish was to just have a tour of the Pokemon card factory. Ever since I watched this video on the news when I was a little kid in 1999 showing how the original basic cards were made, I've always just been thinking, what is it like nowadays when they need to make some Pokemon cards? They're making them a lot more often and serving them to literally the entire world. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I don't know who was listening, but Ando's 27th birthday wish has been delivered. And there was a video that was uploaded and it was showing the entire process of how the modern TCG is currently made, printed, packed, and distributed. All right, so we're gonna do it. We're gonna watch it together. I haven't seen this video yet, so this is a live reaction. I uh, guess what you what you clicked on. All right, that's enough fluffing around. Let's see how some Pokemon cards are made. All right, so it's, yep. Oh, the Pokemon trading card game. One of my favorite logos ever. And it's a Pokemon vending machine. I've actually done a video where I visited one of these exact machines in Seattle. This one looks like it's actually a lot more updated. Ultra Prism. Oh, she's gone for the gold card. She's like, I really want to pull that golden full art. Is she going to get a gold card? We're doing a live reaction to her uh, opening the booster. Shinx reverse. Oh! Mars full art? If that, if that vending machine was in the Pokemon facility, I would love to know. Uh, oh my gosh. Okay, here we go. So this is the Pokemon office. I think it's in Seattle. But yeah, this is 10 months before the uh, booster came out. So it looks like they work about 10 months ahead of schedule. This is the card creation process. So they've already got a base layer of how these cards should look. So when they're translating it from Japanese to English, they can just translate the, uh, I guess what the computer says the translation was, as you saw before. No way, they've got all the Photoshop presets so they can just type it in. Each expansion takes about three weeks. Just, oh look at this, they have to go through every single thing, read it, make sure all the paragraphs, there's no spelling mistakes. And now we're going to create the card textures for the rare cards. So they're isolating groups of the Pokemon to determine what group is going to have the most amount of texture. So obviously they need to texturize the chest. I think they're going to texturize the head, the arms, and then separate it from the background. But the chest looks like it's going to have the most texture on this card. Whoa, this is an uncut sheet of full art cards. There is so much time and effort that goes into each individual card. Oh my gosh, okay, so then they gotta edit after the Japanese, it goes to English, which then goes to all the other countries that you saw there. Oh, no way, so they send the draft off now. So we finally got the translations down, we've designed the cards, and we're gonna send it to the, uh, to the printers, it looks like. Oh, we're making the booster pack art. So obviously they don't just rip off the Japanese pack arts and booster box arts, they could design the English versions of it, so now we're seeing the process that it takes to design the English booster pack. A lot of meetings. Whoa, that was a really alpha look at an Ultra Prism, or like what it could have been. Or like a really dulled down. He's, oh, he's making the names. Do you see all the, can we go back? Can we see the names of what, look at that. What it, what it could have been called. So obviously this is Sun and Moon expansion number five. It could have been Ultra Sinnoh, Ultra Galactic, Galactic Prism. I mean, I would have opened a booster box of Galactic Prism. Gotta get it exactly right. Look how many revisions! Is this how my editor feels looking at all the different drafts of Unlisted Leaf videos <laughs> until it gets the right one? Look at all these designs! So, you guys know the final Ultra Prism design was this one here. You've seen it, you've maybe opened a booster of it, but this is everything we could have got. So, everything that's approved, which is now the cards are all translated, they're made, the texture has been decided what's gonna have the most texture on the card, the booster pack art's been made, and the box art. This is a process. We just buy a six dollar pack at the news agency, but look how much is going in behind the scenes. So he's trying to design the cards that are going to get printed out, these big uncut sheets. And if you've never seen one, I can show you one of mine. A proof is created. So they're checking things at the moment, but it looks like they glue the front end onto the shiny end, which I think is how they make EX cards as well, because when I've ripped EX cards before, don't ask why I've done that, you can see the two layers. Yeah, so these are the holo cards. Okay, so here we go. We're making sure translations are good. I guess the printers actually came out good. The colors are looking shiny. Now the uh, swirls in the texture the right way. The reverse cards, I guess, are looking good. Whoa, magnifying glass. Make sure these are like bang on. Before printing begins. All right, what are we looking at here? Lamination. What are we laminating exactly though? 
There's the holo patterns. 15,000 uncut sheets are printed every day. So they're printing the, the holo pattern that's gonna go behind the hollows, that's gonna go behind the reverses. No way. The magic continues. So we've printed 15,000 holo sheets. 18, oh my gosh. $8.5 million one of those printing machine costs. So little Timmy, if you wanna start your own TCG, that's what you gotta invest in, one of those machines. So he, did he just load in the hollow foil, I think? And he's loading in the ink as well. Oh, he loaded in the paper, it would have been. Because then the ink's going to print, I guess, obviously, the uh, Pokemon cards. So it looks like a lot of scanning of the colours to make sure the colours are correct. Which is why I think when you get those error cards, like I unboxed in Evolutions that weren't the right colour, it was such a big deal because of the amount of quality control that goes on. That's actually hard to hard to come by. So what he's doing now, apparently he's going against, so he'll print two copies off and he'll make sure that the two look exactly the same because if one looks different to the other, then all of them are just gonna be different. So he likes to print off a double copy, he'll make sure they're both the same and then he goes, print 50 million thousand of these cards. Oh, we're cutting the cards now. So we've printed, we've made sure that they're all gonna print the same, they all look identical. Now we're gonna cut the cards out of this uncut sheet, which I'm gonna take some tips from because I've got an uncut sheet. I've thought about cutting it. Let's see what it takes. What do I need? Bruh, look, it just mows through those thingies. Didn't look too crazy difficult to cut those, but they would come out square, wouldn't they? Yeah, they're square, they're square cards. Okay, so how do we get around the edges? How do we round these puppies? The corners are cut for, whoa, look at that machine on the right. Bruh. Did you see that? Can we do a replay? Let's do a replay of the machine cutting the round corners. It's got slices, and when it goes up, it slices it all. Okay, that's a miscut Greninja. But you know, knowing the Pokemon company, they'd probably pop it in there for the lols anyway. So it looks like they roughly, they check the cutting machine, make sure that the borders aren't too crazy before they give the A-OK -okay and print, I mean, cut 50,000 cards out, but... Oh, the code cards! No way, we're getting to see this as well? So the blank code cards are fed into a machine. And if code doesn't work, then uh, it's put to the side. So that's how you always have a working code. And what, would it, what did it say about the weights? It says something about the weights there. The card weight varies to the prevent pack weighing. Cheaters. <laughs> They're very, <laughs> that's very bland, but yeah, it's 100% true. So, as you guys know, the reason why there is different colors and different packs if you get a hit, it's because they weigh different amounts so you can't weigh the packs at the card shop. Okay, the booster pack time. The quality control pack out. Another probably $8 million machine. This is just blowing my mind right now. I don't know if you can tell. It's like almost like cling film, isn't it? Or alfoil, but thinner. Oh, are you looking at this? This is actual base set wrappers, guys. This machine sorts it into packs of 10 randomly, inserts the code cards, and wraps them up with the wrapper. There's the code cards going through, and there's the wrappers that's gonna wrap them. And this machine just wraps them like that really fast. Then they weigh it to make sure 10 cards are in there. This person right here puts the six into a booster case, seals the booster case, and that's what's sold. And they put the sticker on. I didn't know they did that manually. I would have thought a machine could have done that, but I guess like, I'm happy that there's jobs. Like, that's the main thing. All the theme decks, we're getting bonus footage. Printing of the boxes begin. You're gonna need some thick cardboard for this stuff. Those, like, theme decks are so ridiculously thick. Embossing plates to make the uh, theme decks. That was sick. So it looks like they embossed the cardboard with those metal plates. And then they hit. Oh my gosh, so these metal plates make 1,800 impressions an hour. Looks like there's about Six, I think. Six just theme deck cutouts per cardboard they're making there. Oh wow, you load up the trays and that's where the cards, the promo cards go on the trays and then they load up the decks that were already made. And they got the coins! It was spitting out coins into the bowl. Look at the machine that wraps it. Look at all that tape, that Pokeball tape. Where do we go from here? Oh, to the Pokeball warehouse. This is where I dreamed to go here, the storage and shipment area. Oh my, look how many Pokemon cards would be in there. That would be the most awesome sight in the world to see in person. All of these are Pokemon cards ready to be distributed around the world to little Timmy's Walmart so he can buy a booster pack. Oh my gosh, look how many crates there are. These are all cases. Is this not the most eye-opening video you've ever watched on the internet? My mind is literally blown watching this thing. 
and that's it. Now, I don't know about you guys, but I've got a whole new obsession with my uncut sheet right here. We could trim this up, trim the edges around, and we would have some individual Pokemon cards. This is just the, uh, the Neo set right there from the 2000s, but it's an uncut sheet, and I was lucky to have that. I've got a whole new obsession with it now. But hopefully you guys at home found it really, really interesting. Demolish the like button if that was the case, and hopefully Pokemon continue to, I guess, open the door and let us see cooler things like that. Let me know what you thought in the comments, but most of all, keep on gaming.